It's not often I review a software update for a phone, but in this case, the Android 9 update for the mass of popular Android phones, the Galaxy S8, Note 8, uh, S9, Note 9 ranges, also brings a UI change of note. So I wanted to look at it and deliver a verdict. And apologies for any chestiness, I'm still poorly. One UI, as Samsung is calling it, emphasises ease of interaction and, on the Samsung own brand applications at least, controls and content within easy reach when using a phone one-handed. Ever more important these days of increasing display sizes. And this Android 9 One UI combination will be there out of the box, of course, in the new Galaxy S10 range, due to be launched in a couple of weeks' time. And I'll be there at the unpacked event to ask any awkward questions I can think up about what the S10 brings to the table. But onwards. Firstly, the One UI concept, which you can see in any of the Samsung apps, in my case, calendar settings, contacts, phone, clock and notes. There are others, but I tend not to keep them all installed. It works very well with controls and initial content all in the lower half of the screen, and then content scrolls upwards if needed from there. The downside, as you'll have realised, is that this doesn't apply at all to third party or even Google applications, so you'll only be within the One UI look and feel for some of your day. Understandable, and I'll give Samsung some kudos for striking a blow for one-handed use. Maybe other developers can take a cue or two. Next, Samsung's take on Android 9's gestures. You'll remember that the Pixel 3 XL makes quite a bit of a pig's ear of these by insisting on starting gestures from what is quite a space-wasting on-screen home pill. The iPhone's a bit better in this regard, which is kind of a bar stroke pill at the bottom, while OnePlus first knocked out of the park by only using gestures from the screen bottom and with no on-screen waste. Samsung has gone down the latter route, thankfully, with just the merest default hint, a few pixels only, at the screen bottom to show three different swipe sources. From the left one for back, obviously, from the middle for home, from the right for multitasking. In use, it works brilliantly, and you get maximum content on screen all the time. There's even a toggle to remove the hints and get the full screen back, just as with the OnePlus system. Nicely done. There's lots more though if you look closely. There are loads of new always on display clock styles, including my favourite, showing your upcoming calendar appointments as well as time, date and notification icons. Always on. Once the screen is lit up, there are the usual pie improvements to notifications. Many can be replied to or handled directly without needing to go to the application in question. The default Samsung keyboard is better than ever with auto start of S Pen handwriting recognition. A perennial bugbear of Android, RAM and storage clutter that degrade performance over time are addressed here with a rather excellent set of optimizers built into settings. Nothing we haven't really seen before, but I get the impression Samsung has fine-tuned all this and built in lessons that have been learned in previous models, along with tips on battery care, for example, warning against charging in very hot or cold conditions and lowering expectations for battery longevity. Uh, one to three years, apparently, which is refreshingly realistic. Samsung DeX has been improved, but I'm going to come to that in a future video. Also see my article linked here on AAWP. Bixby is apparently all new, but I'm sorry, Samsung, I can't think of a single use for it. Google Assistant is baked in already, and I already have all the apps and news I need. Sorry, still relegated here to a double press of the dedicated key, which means it doesn't get pressed by accident. Overall, though, it's the new gesture system that stands out for me, along with occasional nods to one-handed use when using Samsung branded applications and an improvement in battery life. How does all this stand up to Google's pure Pixel Android 9 approach? Pretty darn well. The extra screen real estate helped by not having a notch on any of the current Samsung flagships and the always useful contacts and clipboard edge panels directly help me each day. This Pi and One UI upgrade is now available for many Note 9s and S9s, S9 Pluses, around the world, rolling out with the Note 8 and S8 range scheduled to get it within a month or two. Yes, it's all taking time, but Samsung does add so many bells and whistles to Android. I'm not at all surprised it takes months rather than weeks to craft and test it all. Samsung, I'm impressed.